Hi guys, this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to do a deep dive, a deep song breakdown and analysis into Miley Cyrus's latest hit song used to be young so there are a lot of incredible things which are there in this song the vocal lines rhythmic structure the the bridge the chord progression and a lot of this is kind of forgotten in music songwriting so i figured we look at this song to kind of be a good benchmark of pop music i think among the pop songs of the recent I guess 5 6 years this really stood out and it was quite exciting for us to put this video together the moment it released in fact we are probably making this video about just about a day after it got released so we are very excited to share this video with you and along with the video with all of what i say there will be chords for each part of the song each section there'll also be notation for every single bit the verse the bridge the chorus the outro and so on and so forth and we are also going to put up a piano arrangement of the song a basic piano arrangement and we'll probably be doing a video of that in the very near future it's not a piano tutorial as we usually do it's a song breakdown of pretty much all the elements of this song and there's so much to tell you so we thought we'll limit this to 5 and see how that goes so hopefully these are the best 5 elements of the song which exist and if you think there are more do leave them in the comments of course before we get started it'll be awesome if you could consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting that bell icon for regular notifications and all the notation my handwritten chord charts are all waiting for you on our patreon page for a small subscription of course for about $5 a month let's get started so the first insanely cool element of this song comes from the piano intro which he also plays during the verse sections the chords are basically e major g sharp minor 7th or g sharp minor or e over g sharp you see where i'm going with this i don't know what that chord is because he's not playing it as chords so i'll deal with that soon so it's kind of e major then then g sharp minor or e major over g sharp and then c sharp minor and then a major okay and this goes on for the verse and more or less the chorus as well but the way the pianist approaches the section is uh, let me play you the intro and you'll you'll get what i'm saying Okay so if you observe the chord structure of the piano except for the first chord which is an E major even this E major is not played in the traditional way right it's not played like that even the second chord G sharp minor is not played in the traditional triadic way and this is a trend i guess with modern day pop and i guess country music as well country music pop music and folk music has always done this where they voice the chords really well it could probably be a open voicing as what we are seeing here So it starts like this. So it's an E major in a open position. Instead of doing E G sharp B, we do E B G sharp. Almost cello like in nature. A cello player playing chords will generally play like that. And on the piano it allows you to go a lot deeper. We've done an entire playlist on spread chords, so do check that out. We'll have it in the description. So you go na 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 na, and each of this is very melodic. There's a da 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 G sharp F sharp F sharp E, and then a B always droning with that. So now already this changes the flavor of the E chord. It's no longer E major. It's more of an E add nine. So E major, E add nine, E add nine, and then normal simple E five, right? And then when it goes to the next part, it's automatically a voicing for a G sharp minor seventh, a very sophisticated chord, but without the without the D sharp, without the fifth. So it's a very clean voicing. and a very dynamic movement of the harmony as well he's not just going 
so he's going it provides a nice counter melody to what miley cyrus is going to eventually sing while the piano continues to play that melody He continues to play that tune so it's incredible so all of the notes with the b so your chords in the left hand would be e just in the bass g sharp bass then c sharp in the bass with the same figure which you played for e offers a completely different perspective when you now played with a C sharp bass third chord and the fourth chord is beautiful that's already an A sus 2 so that ends up forming a A very lydian sound or a sharp 4 sound and the trick is really simple all chords you are going to play need to have a b in them no matter what so you just decide generally when you're playing pop music with these open kind of voicings you could have your root to be rooted or repetitive in this case they are keeping that fifth of the e major scale this song's on e major scale by the way i forgot to mention that four sharps f sharp g sharp c sharp d sharp so we go everything Every harmonic movement has this B in it. Very clean and very deep as well. You can play it quite down below and that lydian sound very beautiful there. And that's an A chord going back to the E which is very interesting. That's called the plagal cadence in music. We miss that a lot these days. It's usually the authentic cadence which is the 5 going to 1 so very vocally nice as well if you sing it it's a vocal melody too and that's not all the piano player is doing there's also a, a good focus on rhythm because for the most part of the song is just piano and vocal so the piano is creating a kind of a broken effect between the chords instead of going that way he's adding the additional b playing as an eighth note there we go so there's always that b and also the b is providing rhythm to the party and to make it even more interesting he's flaming it almost like a guitar most guitar players will play this line like this so it's very guitar like and the piano is also chosen to have a very guitar or a harp like sound it's a felt piano see very subtle yes you should play it also softly but so that's your felt sound beautiful tone right so that's about the piano intro there's so much more the pianist is doing so let's now move forward to the next amazing thing in used to be young by miley cyrus so it might be very weird to say this but secondary dominance are back now in music and hopefully going to be trending the soon as well as miley cyrus has done in this in the chorus of the song so in the verse we did e major na 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 g sharp minor 7 All diatonic. And now the chorus. So that's the chord there, which you. which is always there in your old 90s and especially 80s power ballads so a chord which is not part of the native scale of e major is g sharp or a flat dominant 7th as you can see you have a c there 
which is not part of the scale da, 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 da. so it provides a nice tension and the secondary dominant chords are a detour from your normal road but where you have a road map to go back to the scale and the road map is you just tell yourself all the secondary dominant chords will resolve ba 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 you go up a fourth or down a fifth ba 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 you go down to c sharp so g sharp dominant seventh or a flat dominant seventh i know i used to be fun that's the uh, vocal figure over the g sharp chord and the first chord is just your tonic e major i know i used to be crazy So it just provides that tension na 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 and works with the chord and then g sharp as all g sharp dominant seventh chords do they have that locking or that magnetic property to go to c sharp minor c sharp minor in this case because it's an e major song so where we go you say i used to be wild that's your c sharp minor and the last line of the chorus is incredible sometimes it's A major 6th at the end I say I used to be young while in the first chorus and maybe in the on the more timid or the more quieter parts of the song I say I used to be young that's your minor plagal cadence which is also missing a lot in music so you could argue that this is a borrowed chord from another parallel scale which is not e major you could argue you could argue that it's an e mixolydian flat 6 scale where that chord exists in the chorus you have this varying nature of the last chord i say i used to be when the song gets a bit happier or more positive at least in the video i guess you you'll have a major 6th chord while i say i used to be young you have that minor 6th which is borrowed and what is a major 6th and a minor 6th chord very quickly they are beautiful chords both of them have one thing in common they have a major 6th interval up top and the minor 6th chord is a minor chord with a major 6th chord up top so those are the two remarkable harmonic things in the chorus where we go i know i used to be crazy secondary dominant i know i used to be fun and then the minor the relative minor you say i used to be wild and then sometimes the minor 6 i say i used to be versus major 6 sometimes i say i used to be young and don't forget what miley is doing at the end the the melody of most pop songs these days is this is just pretty much root second third or just three note melodies or sometimes two note melodies or in some horrific cases one note melodies but look what miley does in the end i say i used to be young be young that's a minor 6th jump by the vocalist i say i used to be young be that's very tough to sing actually it's very awesome that that's there and at the catch phrase be young in the song so that's a very good songwriting tip if you want your catch phrase to be very rememberable and meaningful do something different about it and clearly she's found that difference and that edge she made her first three lines very repetitive still the same the same tune and then and that works really well with both the major 6th chord a major 6 and the minor 6 because she doesn't hit the third so she is very clever about singing that melody because it could go with either of those chords there's something more about this song and that brings me to the bridge the bridge pretty much has the same chords they move into like an e major 7th 
Miley now goes into a kind of a vocal solo with just oh, 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 oh uh, things like that and the rhythmic pattern which she uses is in- incredible i'm just going to sing that and it's also notated there so you can see the sophistication there she waits for a dotted quaver and then starts singing that's over the e major 7 that's a 30 second note for you which she does with her voice oh then the secondary dominant which was there in the chorus as well that's the same two tunes but on two different chords and then c sharp okay that's another uh, similar figure but different notes Okay, and then she goes a yeah there again at a very unpredictable point one year a two year a three one year a two year a three one year a two year a three yeah one year a two year a three yeah and then it goes much more higher to the same chord structure but that goes very well with that e major 7th or e major in general that's a nice tension there that's a, like a 11th or an add 4 now is where it gets really interesting so they choose the a 7th chord but miley is singing intervals or has ended up singing intervals singing the sharp 9 as well as the flat 9 literally right after the other wo wo which is the sharp 9 oh which is the flat 9 and the nines we call them nines because they are beyond a seventh chord so there's also a, there's already a seventh chord which is a flat 7 and then she sings a tension note or an extended note over that which is not that note that would be a normal ninth but then you're leaving the e major scale a normal ninth with respect to a flat will actually sound bad that will be wrong actually so she sticks to the key so i thought that was really interesting and very beautiful to hear you are hearing sharp 9 and the flat 9 in which vocal melody have you heard a sharp 9 and a flat 9 in the same song and for one note right after the other that's a trivia question for you i don't know if you'll find many the absolute end of the bridge would be whoa, 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 whoa. she repeats that okay so that's the bridge it's first of all there's no guitar solo it's it's a vocal solo and she just does some vocal syllables like wo o o yeah yeah and it's so well rhythmically knit and then that ending which i told you the the way the inevitable intervals landed up being i thought was very beautiful having the sharp nine in there having the flat nine in there consecutively so there's one more really nice thing i thought worth mentioning about used to be young that's the end of the song where she breaks the song down sings the whole melody one octave low and then she goes back to her usual range but to go back to the last chorus of the song we have this breakdown chorus or like a lesser dynamic chorus i know i used to be crazy so she goes to that lower octave da 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 da, da. and that rhythmic figure i think was the best part of the song for me i don't know how they came up with that so that said the line that's cause i used to be young and she waits for a dotted quaver that's cause one e and a two e and a so the two on and the a of the two and the a of the one 
That's cause I used to be young. Used to be is now a triplet. It's a eighth note triplet introduced in a bar with semi quavers. So there's some serious beat division going on there. Dividing by four, dividing by three, then having a dotted feel, which is a lot of work for just one bar of a song. You know, that's a lot of work put in. So you go. That's cause I used to be young. I know. And then. So let's do that again. That's cause I used to be young, young, young. Almost every beat is a different figure. That's cause I used to be young. And chorus. And then that's pretty much the song, guys. So do let me know what you thought about the song, what you liked about it. Maybe you found something which... I didn't cover in this video. It'll be nice to hear from you as well. These were some of the concepts and I thought as a teacher, it's worth mentioning the things which are more eye-catching from a musical songwriting and theoretical perspective. So hopefully you can use this song as a kind of a benchmark and then listen to another song and see did it have this or did it have something different or way beyond this or did it have something which was not even close to the sophistication of this so i always look at songs at least which i enjoy <clears throat> as songs which surprise me which is kind which is what the great sting also says surprise because me the essence of all music is surprise i also like songs which have a lot of density in them with a lot of interesting things to listen to i don't like the chorus is just copy pasted you know and just a boring bridge which is with the same old thing you know so this is a really nice song you should definitely check it out and hope you found the lesson useful hope you found our breakdown useful and in the very near future we'll be putting out a piano tutorial as well of this same song where we've broken down each part we'll have a beginner version and an advanced version thanks a ton for watching the video all the notation the transcription chord charts my handwritten notes are all on patreon you could consider heading over there downloading all the files and that will support our channel as well a great deal for as low as five dollars a month thanks a ton for watching the video guys cheers